Right, I'm going to demonstrate the uh, B-scope in the Hornet. It's just going to be a quick video. I'm just get myself set up. I've got a target out at about 80 miles. Just going to set the radar up. One four bar. And we'll start off at 140. Why not? There we go. Um, right, we're going straight towards him. There, I'm going to fly 14 half thousand feet Mach point seven straight towards. I'm going to select uh, the radar attack format as my um, sensor of interest right okay so you can see we've got an aircraft let's get that on high PRF we've got an aircraft out ahead of us about 70 miles away the b-scope the b-scope is this scope here it's the um, it's the f format in which the radar attack format is laid out okay um, it's different to what's called a plan position indicator a plan position indicator the radar contacts would be correlated with their geographic position in front of the uh, aircraft or around the aircraft um, and that's not the case of the B-scope. B-scope simply gives you the position of a target against its, uh, with regard to its range from the radar on the Y-axis there and its bearing from the radar in the X-axis. So you can see that at the moment its bearing is zero. If it were over here, its bearing would be 60 degrees left. If it were over here, its bearing would be 60 degrees right. I'm going to move that target over so that it's about 40 degrees to the right. The reason that I've done that will become clear in a moment. Okay, so shortest distance between two points is a straight line. If you're an aircraft intercepting a target, you want to fly the shortest distance because that means you're going to get there and either intercept or destroy or complete your mission, whatever that mission happens to be, um, interacting with that target in the shortest possible time. The shortest distance between two targets or two things that are moving is not necessarily, well it's still a straight line, but it's not necessarily a straight line between those two points as they are in their present position. The shortest distance between two objects that are moving will be a collision course. And if you are on a collision course with another object, its relative bearing from you is not going to be changing. If I have a target out here that's 10 degrees off my nose, over here somewhere, and it's moving right to left, I know it's going to pass down my left hand side. If I have a target over here, 30 degrees off to my left, and it's moving right, I know it's going to pass through my nose, it's going to pass down my right hand side. If I have a target over here that's 20 degrees off my right, and it's staying stationary, then it's still going to be at 20 degrees off to my right at 60 miles, 6 miles, 6 feet, 6 inches, etc. Okay, it's coming straight towards me. Given what we know then about the B-scope, let me just zoom this range in, if we know that these lines represent bearings from our nose, and in the case of the Hornet it's in 30 degree increments, if the target is coming straight down the display, i.e. its bearing isn't changing, then we are on a collision course with that target. We are flying the most um, efficient intercept uh, geometry if all we want to do is fly a uh, collision intercept. There are different types of intercept, but that's another topic for another time. So I'm going to fly my aircraft in such a manner as to make that target come straight down that screen um, without drifting left or right. You can see at the moment it's drifting to the left, okay, because the target, the uh, the bearing between us and the target is reducing. So ultimately it will pass through our nose. We don't want that, so I'm going to turn and place it slightly further to the right on the radar screen and I'm reducing my height so that we get reduced vertical separation and so that we can see the target hopefully when we fly past it. I'm just going to increase the number of trails in fact I've got a number of trails set at 16 already. Right I'm now going to reduce my radar um, sweep to 40 degrees so that we get a slightly higher update rate. There we go I'm doing a terrible job of controlling my height on this serial. You can see it's still drifting slightly to the left, so I'm going to offset further to the right. I want it coming straight down that screen on a constant bearing and therefore on a collision intercept. And actually in order to make the point I'm going to come slightly more heads in so that I've got a reduced um, view out the window and therefore can't be accused of uh, DRing on visually uh, once we get within visual range. We're still 20 miles away at the moment so I'm going to reduce the scale down again 20 miles. Now I'm not saying for a moment that this is how you should necessarily conduct your intercepts. Uh, this is purely to demonstrate how 
the radar B scope works. Now, this is one way of flying an intercept. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking that this aircraft, if I hover the cursor over it, that its hafu tail uh, would be pointing straight towards us because it is coming straight towards us. Uh, although you'd also be forgiven for thinking it was going to pass down our right hand side. It is drifting to the left a little so I'm going to again displace it to the right. So let's test that. Let's have a look at the latent track while scan which will show us the aspect and you can see that actually the target's aspect is off. Um, we're about 60 degrees nose off so the aircraft's going to be travelling um, in a different direction to us. It's not on a reciprocal heading although you'd be forgiven for thinking it is because its relative motion is coming straight towards us. Um, it is on a different heading. I'll reduce the range again but we are flying a collision intercept with it. And I'll, um, I'll see if I can overlay the tack view um, from this to better make my point. So it is now coming straight down the screen towards it as best as I can tell and so we will therefore, we should therefore get a collision intercept. I'm at 14,000 feet. I'm going to bring my height up very very slightly so that we get a closer board pass. And we should be just underneath it. I'm going to reduce the range again, five miles. It's coming straight down and that cross actually gives us a quite useful measure of how accurate this intercept is going to be. I'm just going to bring us slightly to the right and go to the outside view. Oh yeah, there we go. So had we been co-altitude, I think we can safely say we'd have taken the nose off that H6J. So just a reminder then, aircraft coming straight down the screen, you are on a collision intercept with them. The way that they are moving across the screen does not represent uh, their geographic position in front of you. The B-scope purely is designed to make the angles easier to understand. Uh, in that way it's a highly intuitive radar display when you understand it uh, but it can be a little bit confusing and non-intuitive for those that are new to it and treat it like a plan position indicator. Hopefully that helped you uh, understand it a little better. Uh, be more videos like this to come. Thanks for watching.